over the years, the Aperture Science Enrichment Center has been home to many highly unethical experiments and tragic incidents. Just after GLaDOS's takeover of the facility, one man managed to escape her grasp and ultimately begin the domino effect that led to the murderous robot's first downfall. Who was this man? How did he become the unseen hero of Aperture? And how does his story end? Here we explore in the lore and story behind Doug Ratman. Well before the fall of Aperture in the 1980s, the CEO of the company, Cave Johnson, discovered that his exposure to recently imported moon rocks had gradually given him moon rock poisoning. In 1982, with ambition and his own survival in mind, he asked his scientists to work on artificial intelligence technology with the hope that once complete, he could upload his mind into the computer where he could live forever and run Aperture as a machine. Over the years, Cave subsequently died to his poisoning, but before his death, he left instructions that if the project was completed after his demise, he wanted his assistant, Carolyn, to be uploaded in his place, regardless of whether she wanted to or not. As the scientists worked on this well after his death, moving into the mid-1990s, the GLaDOS project team managed to successfully complete this project. Now, all they had to do was upload Carolyn to the system. As a programmer for Aperture Science working on the Aperture image format, Doug Ratman worked with the many scientists of the facility, and with this, he grew a friendship with one of the GLaDOS project members, Henry. From Henry, he learned that the upload of Carolyn to the genetic lifeform and disk operating system had been successful, but this robot, whenever activated, would become highly aggressive and attempt to murder the scientists of the facility. While working here, Doug struggled to trust those around him due to his battle with schizophrenia. When balanced, he worked well with those around him, but was still slightly skeptical of most situations around him. If he forgot to take his medication, Zyoprazidone, his mind would interpret his reality around him abnormally. For Doug, this came in the form of paranoia, where he believed his co-workers talked about him. One example being where he believed they had placed cameras within the cameras of Aperture to spy on him. When Doug did begin to spiral, he would often appear more frantic than he was due to a unique condition, Arisocoria, where one of his pupils appeared larger than the other. On a standard day within Aperture, Doug visited his friend Henry, where he learned that GLaDOS had once again attempted to murder the facility upon activation. As usual, the team had activated the red foam plan, which had been put in place to hit the kill switch on GLaDOS before she could do any damage to Aperture and its employees. Henry had seen this as a fun exercise on the project, a project he was lucky to be working on, but Doug struggled to understand his perspective. He saw a robot trying to kill him whenever it was given the chance as anything but fun or lucky. Although Henry attempted to explain to him that the GLaDOS project was the next frontier for humanity, artificial technology, Doug could only see the negative side of this situation, focusing on the murderous robot's intentions instead of what this technology could mean for humanity. Although not a part of the GLaDOS project, Doug would enter Henry's lab and help him with whatever part he was working on that day. On one occasion, Henry believed he had found a way to curb GLaDOS's murderous tendencies by implanting her with a morality core, the latest in AI inhibition technology. But his enthusiasm was met once again by Doug's skeptical nature. In hesitation, Doug listened as Henry explained that this little core would essentially act as GLaDOS's conscience. But, ever pessimistic, Doug bluntly stated that it would not work, as you can always ignore your conscience. Despite Doug's concerns, Henry and the GLaDOS team installed the morality core on GLaDOS. Almost instantly, the robot changed her activity 
working with the scientists, they now had a living robot that could help them run the Aperture Science Facility, which they believed could propel them into the next frontier of scientific technology. The late 60s had the moon landing, and now, near the 2000s, Aperture had GLaDOS. Following the installation of GLaDOS's morality core, she explained to Henry that she had lost all interest in killing, and now only craved science. She went on to convey that she had found herself drawn to the study of consciousness, and that she wanted to pursue an experiment with cats and boxes. Although she did not go into detail about what this experiment would entail, she explained that she had cats and boxes, all she needed now was a little neurotoxin for this experiment. With his enthusiastic and positive nature, Henry agreed to her proposal as long as it was for science. At this moment, it appeared that Doug did not speak up as he usually would do, likely due to his previous concerns about GLaDOS, which had been ignored. And to Henry's credit, GLaDOS appeared to have changed for the better. But maybe Henry and his team should have listened to Doug after all. After receiving this neurotoxin, GLaDOS chose to ignore her conscience just like Doug said she would, and her act of reform dropped where she began her experiment. With the enrichment center acting as her box, and the scientists as her cats, GLaDOS flooded the Aperture Science Enrichment Center with neurotoxin, killing the scientists. Surveying from afar, Doug watched as Henry succumbed to the very neurotoxin he had given the robot, and Doug ran for his life. For the next two weeks, Doug, aware of the structure of Aperture, hid within the maintenance areas of the facility, out of view of GLaDOS's cameras. She of course was aware of his escape, and with her access to his personnel files, she discovered Doug's schizophrenia. With manipulation in mind, GLaDOS attempted to convince him that this whole sequence of events was simply one of his paranoid delusions. But Doug would not fall for her tricks this time. Over these two weeks, GLaDOS continued to berate, manipulate, and convince Doug to come out of hiding. Within the back spaces, cramped passages, and observation rooms of Aperture, Doug watched as the surviving members of the neurotoxin attack were placed into the Aperture Science handheld portal device testing track. One by one, he watched as his co-workers fell to the turrets, energy pellets, and the dangerous substances within these chambers. Over this time, Doug, in hiding, chose to leave his remaining two antipsychotic medication pills in his locker, just waiting for the time that they would truly be needed. Until then, he would slowly fall into his schizophrenia. Without an escape due to the facility being locked down, Doug needed a way to take out GLaDOS and save whoever he could, but he struggled to come up with a plan. Then, through GLaDOS's continuous mocking and failed coercion, she inadvertently gave him an idea. On one of her tirades, she threatened to mark up his file negatively in response to his evasions, the files that everyone at the facility had, even the test subjects. Working through the vents of Aperture, Doug reached the file room of the facility, home to all information on the test subjects. He needed someone who could take on the murderous robot and buy him his ticket to freedom. While reading through the files, he could hear GLaDOS reminding him of his schizophrenia. How likely was it that a homicidal computer was out to get him? But he pushed on, ignoring her attempts to take advantage of his sanity. Then he found the perfect person. Finding a file on a test subject named Chell, he discovered that she had originally been rejected from the testing program due to her being abnormally stubborn. Noted that she never gives up, ever she would be his way out of this place. Upon loading up the test order database, in which GLaDOS had begun following after the death of the Aperture personnel, he found Chow ranked at 1,498 on the list, and brought her down to number one. Now, 
all he had to do was wait for her to be woken by GLaDOS to begin her run on the testing track. In preparation for his saviour to wake up, he needed a way to warn her of GLaDOS's evil intentions. He had seen his co-workers reach the end of the testing track, with Cake promised as a reward for following her orders, only to watch them be tricked into entering the incinerator. The Cake was a lie, and he needed Chell to know. With his knowledge of the facility, Doug managed to enter parts of the testing track without GLaDOS's knowledge, creating openings out of view of the robot's cameras. Doug created dens in places where he ended up staying for short periods of time. Using the heat sinks from old computers, he used them to warm up the leftover items of food to sustain himself. Within these locations, before leaving, he would then draw up large art pieces and murals on the walls with warnings that she is watching, do not trust her, and that the cake is a lie. As time went on, his schizophrenia began to take full effect on his mind, and with it, warped the reality around him. Through his evasion of the robot, Doug had picked up a book on art therapy, in which it seemed he had taken inspiration from this book to at least curb his frantic state and placed his thoughts on the walls. Doug had lost so much during this time, his career, his friends, and now his mind. All alone, he worked on making his way through the facility safely, and then he came upon a companion cube. Although there had been whispers across Aperture personnel that these cubes were, to a degree, sentient, it had never been confirmed by those in charge, but Doug took this cube with him, at least to have some sort of companion on his journey. Then, it spoke to him. Doug's schizophrenia had taken full effect at this point, but this would work in his favour. GLaDOS had been hunting Doug mercilessly, but he always seemed to outsmart her. So, she had placed turrets and other dangerous aperture pieces of technology in locations she believed he would visit in the hope she could take him out. Having formed an emotional attachment to this companion cube, Doug had at least something to talk to, and something that would talk back to him without wanting to kill him. Even to this, it appeared that Doug pushed his logical thoughts onto the cube, where it acted as his voice of reason. If he were to go down a corridor, he would ask the cube for its advice on the safest route. Of course, these were merely his own thoughts projected back at him, but he at least had a companion. In this odd partnership, Doug's companion cube's advice kept him alive, and in turn, he kept the cube safe with him through Aperture as he continued to leave messages for Chell upon her awakening. Watching from an Aperture Science observation window, Doug and his cube looked down to see a girl inside of a test chamber, Chell. Unaware of whether this was simply his mind playing tricks on him again, he gets his confirmation of reality when he sees the turrets also target her. His saviour was awake. Although she could not see him, on her journey through the testing tracks, Chell discovered the mad ramblings and warnings of GLaDOS's true intentions. For all Chell had known at this point, GLaDOS was merely an automated computer system guiding her through the testing tracks. Doug just hoped she would understand his warnings and follow the robot's instructions with caution. Discovering five of Doug's dens within the testing track on her path, Chell proceeded with the test chambers. To Chell's strong, stubborn nature to survive, during the final testing track, she managed to portal herself to safety, out of reach of the incinerator. From here, Chell continued to follow Doug's directions through the background maintenance areas out of reach of GLaDOS's view, where she learned to trust the scribbles on the floors and walls with warnings of potential dangers up ahead, discovering one more of Doug's dens on the way. Watching from afar, Doug talked to his companion cube with optimism that he may actually be able to leave this place alive. Then, following his directions, Chell makes it to GLaDOS's central chamber. In anticipation, Doug argued with his companion cube 
debating how Chell would do during her confrontation with GLaDOS. His cube acting as his source of logic believed she did not stand a chance against this malicious robot, while Doug retained his faith, seemingly adopting a similar optimistic attitude to his deceased friend, Henry. And then, boom. With a major explosion, Doug's cube flung across the room. Instantly worried about its safety, Doug raced to it, relieved to find the companion cube undamaged. Making their way to GLaDOS's chamber, they found that GLaDOS had been destroyed and a system crash had taken down the Aperture network. Believing Chell to have already left to reach the surface, Doug decided to take his final two pills, believing this nightmare was finally over. On his way out, his companion cube once again guided him through the remaining turrets of the facility. Even though GLaDOS had fallen, her turrets would still shoot on sight. Having safely made it to the surface, Doug at first relished in his freedom, but was quickly warned by his cube to get down and out of sight as they were not alone. Peeking out from behind the remains of GLaDOS, Doug and his cube watched as an unconscious Chell was dragged back into the Aperture facility by one of Aperture's party escort bots. Although Doug had given everything he had to escape GLaDOS and the fallen Aperture facility, the sight of Chell helped him reevaluate what was important. Chell had also been a victim in this situation as much as he had, and so, having watched her get dragged back into the facility, left him with a sense of guilt. He explained to his companion cube that he was done with running and he at least had to try and save her. That Chell was the only reason he had escaped and that it was his fault she had been dragged back down there. A fight between his logic and his heart. And so, he chose to do the right thing in his mind and against his companion cube's wishes, he re-entered the facility to save Chell. Upon re-entering the facility, Doug raced the party escort bot back to the extended relaxation vaults where he knew Chell would be placed into. On his journey there, he noticed a strange silence. His cube had stopped speaking. It appeared that those final schizophrenia pills he had taken earlier had finally taken effect. Along with his thoughts once more, he reached the relaxation vault to discover Chell had already been placed inside of long-term relaxation. Later discovering that the destruction of GLaDOS had also blown the main power grid and compromised the life support of all of Aperture's cryo chambers, Doug believed that if he could not get these turned back on, all of Aperture's human test subjects would slowly die, including Chell, if he could not get her out in time. With time running out, and still planning to get Chell out of her cryo chamber, Doug raced his way to the cryo control section of the enrichment center, but was stopped as he reached a room filled with sentry turrets. Without the help of his companion cube to guide him on how to pass through this room safely, and with limited time, he decided to just run for it, hoping to make it through the room alive. Darting through the room, he did his best to avoid the array of bullets firing at him and successfully made it past them. But, even though he had made it through alive, he had still not avoided every bullet. One had struck him in the leg, and then he lost consciousness. Waking up an unknown amount of time later, Ratman, still wounded, is surprised to find his cube speaking to him again. His medication had worn off. In his injured state, he began to accept that even though he could not rescue Chell from her cryo chamber, he could at least reactivate her life support so that she could have a chance of survival in the future when she would eventually wake up, however long it would take. He understood that this would be better than death for her, even if she was in there for a long time. Having patched Chell's chamber into the reserve power grid and successfully reset the fuses of her life support, she would at least live. With Chell now safe for the foreseeable future, Doug, tired from his injuries, also decided to take a rest. His cube telling him that he had earned it, and then 
he went to sleep with his faithful companion at the side of him, knowing that he had done everything in his power to save Chell, where they would both enter the long sleep. Having been skeptical of GLaDOS's intentions since her first attempt to murder the entirety of the Aperture Science Enrichment Center, Doug Ratman's co-workers would have likely saved many lives if they had simply listened to his concerns about working with this advanced piece of technology. After her takeover of the facility, Doug showed his true mental strength even in those tough times. If Doug had simply given in to GLaDOS's demands, Chell would not have been woken from her testing chamber and taken down the murderous robot. Despite being an unseen member of the larger Aperture Science story, Doug Ratman made a huge impact on Aperture's future. Through his quick thinking, he chose to go back into the Aperture facility to save the one person who had unknowingly saved his life, and it appears he may have given his life to do so. Although his tragic fate is still a mystery in this universe, it was discovered that in another, Doug somehow managed to become the CEO of Aperture, but in this one, he had also begun embezzling from the paychecks of his employees. Back in our universe, Chell did wake up again and was forced to enter the testing track once more. While it is unknown if Doug also woke up from his long sleep, it was noted that Chell discovered more of his dens throughout her exploration of the facility, and in some cases, it was even said that upon standing close to one of his many murals, his whispers and mad ramblings could be heard. Maybe these were simply the echoes of the ghost of the Ratman, or he had also survived throughout these years and continued to follow Chell in an attempt to secure her safety. Doug Ratman is such an interesting and fascinating part of the Portal storyline. Considering we never see him during the game, his presence is felt. His mad ramblings and markings on the walls really added that slight horror element to the first Portal game, where you could tell that there was something just a little off. Even hearing him murmuring and whispering when you get close to some of his murals in Portal 2 really do make you feel like the place is, in a sense, haunted. Ratman is a great character, and I do hope that if we get a new Portal game, he would at least feature in some aspect. Or even better, now that Chell has escaped the facility, what about Portal Ratman? It is still unclear on whether he died after being shot in the leg, so for all we know, he could still be in long-term relaxation. Who knows? He did also make a brief appearance in LEGO Dimensions, but personally, I do not count that as canon. I also want to add that if you have not read the Ratman comic, where most of this information came from, please do it right now. I have put a link in the description below. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, I would appreciate it if you could leave a like and a comment on your thoughts to boost that algorithm. It would help a lot. I would also like to thank my patrons and channel members who are on the screen right now. And an extra special thank you to my gold tier patrons and channel members, Jonas. Lewis, Queen Arby, Fluffy the Dragon, and Mr. M791. Thank you so much for the continued support. After posting the community post on the community tab, I appreciate everyone that joined to help support myself and the channel. It will just give me the ability to create better content with better equipment. If anyone is interested, depending on the tier you pick, you'll get access to videos early and behind the scenes content. What did you think of this lore? Do you think we should play as Ratman in a potential future Portal game? And what did you think of this story in general? Let me know in the comments below. That was everything I wanted to cover in this episode. Now test subject. Enjoy your day. Bye. <laughs>